Hello, hello, hello. It's me, it's Susan Stiffelman. Today I am, let's see if I can show you, a major fan of Mr. Robert Rogers. Well, not just today, every day, but I am here to share with you some of the takeaways that I got from the Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? And I'm wearing this fabulous t-shirt that my wonderful assistant Amy Nobler got me. And for those of you who might catch this later, let me just um, kind of catch you up a little bit. And for any of you who are tuning in, I want to share with you first, before I hear your thoughts about the film and about Mr. Rogers himself, um, I want to share with you how this idea came about to offer a little bit of a get together online for us to just talk about this amazing human being, especially in the context of what our kids are going through in today's world, where they're exposed to so much, they're plugged into devices so much, they're being asked at younger and younger ages to do inappropriate stuff like worksheets for kindergartners and preschoolers. And um, I think what happened for me watching this movie was, well, I cried. And I also just felt like, could we have him back? Like, could we have that influence that he radiated of kindness and love and acceptance and honesty and respect? Could we bring more of that? into the lives of our children. So because I have this world and this community with all of you who are really dedicated parents, I want to hear from you and I'd love for us to sort of get re-inspired. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, no problem. I'll, I'll just tell you briefly that I didn't expect it to be so powerful and apparently it's one of the top um, movies, documentaries in many, many years. Um, in large part, what it does is it gives you snippets of what happened in his life and how he came to really commit himself to making life for children feel safe and, and help them feel loved. So there's a few basic tenets, and anytime you want to jump in, this is very informal and casual. I want to hear what you thought of the movie, what it inspired you to do differently in your life. Um, I think I felt so wistful for a time when we weren't moving so fast. And there was some, some little, uh, another show called uh, It's You I Like that I happened to see on PBS. And Sarah Silverman, the, the comic, is, in, is one of the people interviewed about Mr. Rogers. And she, she, they show a little clip of him doing something really goofy that he doesn't know how to do very well. And he's kind of awkward. And she said he didn't care how it looked. So he always looks awesome, willing to be vulnerable and willing to learn stuff. And we can do that in front of our children. We don't have to act like we always have it together. We can be in that state of wonder and curiosity and uncertainty that he exemplified. So um, here are a few of the things that I want us to make sure we talk about. And anytime you want to jump into the chat, that please feel free if you like what... I'm saying, or you agree, I think you can hit the, gosh, I don't know, hit the like button. <laughs> um, first of all, some of his core tenets, every child is worthy of being loved just as they are. Oh my gosh. You know, I think that that's the cornerstone of what he, what he taught, what he stood for. And one of the featured um, clips in this documentary was of a little boy named Jeffrey, I can't remember his last name, who many years later shows up again in Mr. Rogers' life to give him an award. And of course, there's not a dry eye in the house. Um, he, he showcases this little boy who has a lot of disabilities. And this is the kind of thing Mr. Rogers did. Instead of kids sort of being awkward and the parents saying, don't stare at that little boy. He brings the child onto the onto into an episode and he says, I see that you're in a wheelchair. Well, how did that happen to you? And what is that like? So he took all these secret musings that we that our kids entertain, these these curiosities, 
And so many of them, we tell our kids, don't say that, don't ask that, don't look. But he brought it all out into the open. And, you know, this beautiful little boy sings that song with him. It's, it's, it's you I like. It's not the things you do. Oh, my gosh, it was so beautiful. It's you I like every part of you, your skin, eyes, feelings. It's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you I like. And so one of the main things that I want to share from that aspect of what he taught was how we can say to our children every day, I love your voice. I love the kindness that you show the puppy. I love how, how interested you are in nature. When we comment not on, I love that great, that A that you got on the test, not on their performance or achievement, but rather on who they are as a human being, the unique arrangement of cells and neurons that make this creative, brilliant being in our midst, that child is fed from that. You know, there's an amazing book called Perfect Love in Perfect Relationships by John Wellwood, and he talks about how we all walk around with this deep core wound or doubt or insecurity that we're defective or that we're not lovable. And, and so one of the things I really wanted us to talk about and emphasize is that Mr. Rogers showed us that by really, and he did a lot of this with songs, by reminding our children that just as they are, we are just enamored of them, we are enthralled by them, we love them, it's so nourishing for them. So that's one thing. And I see um, Amy, you're in, signed in as me, so it looks like I love my own shirt. Um, Alexandra says, normalizing, yes, normalizing experience with acceptance and love and respect. I've just seen that episode of Mr. Rogers where he's saying that song. I think it's so great for children to know they are valued simply for being who they are. Woohoo! I'm with you. I love that. And if you have a chance and you can get the PBS show, if you're a fan like I am, you'll love it. In fact, my husband was watching me watch it this morning and, and said, oh my gosh, I want to see that from the beginning. And so, um, Yes, because he really carries that theme through everything. Another thing he talks about is that every person is unique and special. So um, he says some people play an instrument and some people don't. It's important to find out what we feel good about doing and then practice that. How awesome is that? That he, he, we aren't all supposed to be great at math. We aren't all supposed to be great at at you know gardening or painting we each need to discover what our unique talent and our unique skill in it is and mr rogers just really brought that to life and then he brings on itzhak perlman the, the phenomenal world-class violinist who comes in on his crutches and in this interview they talk mr uh, uh, itzhak perlman says they wanted me to walk in on my crutches and not just appear on the screen already seated because then he talked about the crutches and mr rogers asks it's like perlman oh i see that you're walking with crutches can you tell me about that these are the things children would be curious about and he was so forthright and so respectful and so it's like perlman says yes when i was about four years old i got a disease called polio and it made the muscles in my legs very weak and so I have braces now on my legs and I have crutches and it's all straightforward and then he goes on to, to play music and to talk about how you can infuse music with feeling like happiness or sadness and of course that leads to one of the next wonderful things about Mr. Rogers which is that difficult emotions like sadness and excitement and or well, not excitement but sadness and worry and fear they need to be brought out into the open and he says sometimes people feel bad sometimes they feel mad sometimes they feel really sad uh, but those same people who are sad sometimes are the very same people who are glad sometimes so i encourage you to really make that known for your children maybe even have it written on a big poster or a big thing on your refrigerator. Sometimes people who are very mad, sometimes people are very mad and sometimes people are very sad and sometimes people are very glad. Because 
he makes room for us to feel what we are as human beings, as human feeling machines. And he talks about, do you have ways of showing that you're angry where you don't hurt anyone else? And he sings a, a, a song about how sometimes the world seems wrong and everything you do feels not very right. I sure know that feeling. And he says, it's great to be able to stop and think this think or sing this song when you're angry. So most of the songs are the kinds of things that kids could remember and they're very gentle and very thoughtful and they're about emotions. So bringing our children's fears and, and I mean their difficult emotions out into the open was something he was just masterful at doing. And again, if you have any thoughts or comments, I'd love to hear them. He also talked about helping kids sort out these secret fears and worries that they often feel embarrassed or reluctant to share. And he leans right into it. Now, in my world, if you follow my work, you know I talk a lot about Act One parenting, where we help our children know that it's okay to feel whatever they feel, that we can handle it, that we're that calm captain of the ship who's sturdy enough to have to be able to help them process those difficult feelings. Um, many of us, though, when our kids ask a question like, well, why did grandma die? Or, or what's death? Or why that witch is so scary? We just tell them, oh, there's nothing to worry about. Or nobody dies till they're old. And our children deserve the kind of respect and honesty that he showed them when he talked about his little dog that was dying and she got to be old and how he cried and cried. Um, he brought on, do you guys remember the original Wizard of Oz? I was scared of that witch. I found her so scary. And in the PBS special, he has a clip where he brings Margaret Hamilton on, who was the Wicked Witch. And of course, she's just a normal lady. And they talk about the movie and she very gently does the cackle so the kids can see she's actually a regular person who was acting and then he has her get into costume and put her makeup on but they get to see all that happening he says when you see witches on television they're always pretend because he understood that children are really um sort of fluid with imaginary and real and he honors that and he helps them start to differentiate what's make-believe and what's real of course by the train that goes to the world of land of make-believe and the puppets that are so simple and so basic and and he makes a really clear distinction between what's real and what's pretend so i urge you to find some mr rogers episodes if you can and i know when my son was little i found it a little slow and kind of boring and i i didn't understand how it wasn't about entertaining me like some of these very fast moving, clever kid shows do. It was that Mr. Rogers was so committed to appealing to his audience, which were young children and young children's brains move slower. They process things more slowly. They don't need the image to change every seven seconds. They don't need it. It's hard for them to be bombarded with so much noise and sound. He had long gaps of quiet where he might just be pouring something. And it was so soothing for children who need that kind of quiet and slow. So now that I look back, I'm glad I did watch as much as I did, but I urge you to see if you can't bring that back into your children's lives because there's really no one and nothing like it. Um, Mr. Rogers would talk about birth and he had a video in one of his segments showing a cat giving birth and that little baby kitten coming out looking one way and then fluffing up and then being licked by the mother he would bring up issues that kids might be thinking about but not sharing with their parents like divorce you know um talking about a child he had talked to who cried and cried because they thought that their parents come not staying married was their fault so he he's talking to like three and four year olds you guys he's not talking to a a really highly sophisticated mature older audience but he's he's honoring what's true for them is that they have difficult feelings and they would like to be able to get them out in the open and then finally 
Oh, one of my favorite parts of Mr. Rogers. He knew that children wanted to know how things are done. You know, I do. Uh, yeah. How is this class made? How does how does how do things happen in the world? So um, he how was music played? He brought Yo Yo Ma on. In fact, there were only two times that Yo Yo Ma's son played a duet with his father Yo Yo Ma. One was and they were both on Mr. Rogers. One when he was six, and one when he was sixteen. It's like Perlman showing how they could you know make feeling come from tones and music and melody. But then he showed how he made the voice of the puppet so that kids could make the connection between make-believe and real and how that made it seem so real. He, he, he let us peek behind the curtain. And then, of course, Mr. McFeely, the postman, would come with his special films to play on Picture Picture. And he, he has these amazing, incredible little short videos about how things are made like peanut butter and spoons and harmonicas and trumpets and dolls and crayons so the children would see wow oh a person does this a person who could like I could do something like this I could be creative I could be inventive so um you know let's see what kind of comments we have and Amy says, I remember that Wicked Witch episode, do you really? Yeah, and Paul's radical acts of kindness. Yes, we are um, We are fortunate, those of us who got to see some of these episodes. And I think in closing, I just want to say, be inspired by, you know, there's so much that comes at us every day in the news, in the media, on the internet, in our social media feeds. And a lot of the times our children are picking up on that. So when we slow down and we turn to our kids with no devices on and with just a quiet gentleness and say, I'd love to know what you're thinking, or I'd love to know how you're doing. And we make room for them to tell whatever truth is, is theirs, whether we agree with it or disagree. We help them reconnect with that, that sense of safety, of comfort, of of you know those things that nurture them to grow into the remarkable human beings that they're going to become and that they already are and of course finally that we let them know it's you i like just exactly the way you are so thank you guys for joining me thanks for sharing my enthusiasm for mr rogers and um, i hope that i get to see you here soon all the best to all of you